Welcome to The Real News Network. I'm Paul Jay in Baltimore. Now joining us to talk about the Democratic Party convention and the American presidential race is Glenn Ford. He's the co-founder and current executive editor of Black Agenda Report. Thanks very much for joining us. Uh, thanks for the invitation, Paul. So th there's two ways to assess the Democratic Party and President Obama. One is in relationship to the Republican Party, and the other is in relationship to the actual problems facing people. And, and, and who, and in, in the discussion or analysis of who President Obama represents. So let's start with, with one. People do have a choice to make here, if they choose to vote at any rate. Um, and you know, whatever other candidates are running, there's no doubt it's going to be either the Democratic Party or the Republican Party. Um, so in relationship to the Republican Party, how do you assess the Democrats? And then we'll get into part two of assessing them uh, sort of on their own merits. Well, we're not talking about just the Democrats. We're talking about uh, the particular wing of the party that is headed by uh, President Obama. Uh, let's say straight up, right up front, that Black Agenda Report considers uh, Barack Obama not to be the lesser of the evils, but to be the more effective evil. And that means that he facilitates uh, the evil uh, that is incarnate <laughs> in the Republican uh, Party. So to see them uh, separately, I don't think really takes into account the actual dynamics uh, of these two corporate parties and, and how they uh, push and pull on each other on the road to corporate uh, rule. Well, let me give you an argument the other way. The, the Democratic Party, even if at, their, at the corporate Democrat level, which controls the party apparatus and that section of Wall Street that funds them and, and such, uh, for, first of all, of course, they have their, their own interest, that section of, of the elite, and, and it's not very different than the section of, of the elite that supports the Republicans. And of course, we know lots of the Wall Street firms and other big companies support both parties and, and, and get what they can out of whichever party comes to power. But the constituency that elects the Democrats includes trade union leaders, it includes urban workers, it includes urban intelligentsia, it includes poor people, it includes uh, immigrants. And, and, and there, there's some pressure, at least, for the Democrats to get elected that they have to do something for those constituencies, even if it's not something substantive. Uh, whereas the Republican alliance of forces is the right wing of the working class, rural people, uh, the right wing, far right of, of the elite, uh, who are for, you could say, unmitigated uh, exploitation of, of uh, ordinary Americans. And they don't need to do much of anything other than, you know, commit to these kind of hard right policies to get elected, assuming that they win, but they're, it, it's fairly close. So out of, out of, it's not a kind of moral question that one, one section of the elite's better than the other, but out of their own interests, there's some advantage to ordinary people to having Democrats versus straightforward, austerity programmed Republicans. So what do you make of that argument? Well, but first of all, uh, the Republican Party, although the most closely identified uh, with, uh, with the bourgeoisie, as we used to say, uh, and certainly certain sectors of the bourgeoisie, like, like big energy, also has an institutional life of its own. And so it should not be mistaken for uh, those rich folks uh, that it uh, tries to represent. And because the Democrats under, under Obama, and really we're talking about Obama, uh, uh, have taken so much of the right-wing ground from the Republicans, and they have an institutional will to survive, they have moved so far to the right that we like to, uh, we like to call them wily Coyote. Uh, they've actually been driven off the cliff uh, by President Obama's constant moving just uh, a little bit to the left of them uh, so that their policies now are, are ridiculous, uh, crazy, uh, almost uh, incoherent. But that doesn't mean uh, that those segments of the ruling class that support them are as crazy and incoherent and ridiculous uh, as their Republican representatives who are just trying to find uh, some kind of space as it gets encroached upon by the Democrats. Now, now certainly, uh, and especially with the residue of, uh, of, of the New Deal 
uh, and uh, the war on poverty and such and the actual existence of, of lots of programs, uh, we're, we're going to see uh, Democrats uh, protecting some aspects of those programs. And, that's, uh, and essentially they won't uh, make a frontal assault on them. But when it, when it really comes down to, to that struggle, uh, that push and pull between the two, well, what do we see? We see President Obama uh, using his vehicle of the Deficit Reduction Commission, uh, which he appointed, which he appointed before uh, the Republicans took over the, uh, the House of Representatives. We see him using the recommendation of the two right-wingers that he put in charge of that commission for four trillion dollars in in cuts uh... and and we see that the republicans also uh... last year uh... came up with roughly the same amount of cuts the difference between those two where they both wound up uh... was essentially uh, that uh... obama's uh, four trillion dollars in cuts uh... was accompanied by uh, a request uh, for modest uh, increases in, in the taxes of people who have uh, money. And the Republicans said uh, that they uh, would have no part of tax increases. Now, that really made no damn bit of difference uh, to the people who are going to suffer those $4 trillion worth of cuts. It doesn't do me any good if you gut my survival program just to know that rich people are going to pay a little bit uh, more taxes. So, so in a in a real practical sense, uh, that right wing uh, camp of Democrats, represented by Obama uh, and the Republicans, certainly in 2011, and we see them kind of actually frozen, despite the the rhetoric of of, of, of Romney and Ryan, uh, uh, came together pr pretty pretty much in a in a in a, in a tight fit. So uh, do you not think that if there was a Romney government, that this government would not attack those programs more vigorously, that, that they would do you not think they would do what Ryan's budget calls for? I, I believe that, first of all, they can't uh, enact legislation uh, uh, without the Democrats blocking it. And this is where Obama uh, comes in. You know, uh, we, we uh, exceeded uh, all this power uh, to Republican minorities, that is, pr 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 in both houses, uh, prior to uh, 2010 election, uh, because they could block things. Well, Democrats can block things as well. It is difficult to pass legislation, especially in the Senate with their 60% uh, rule. Uh, so, so it's difficult uh, to overcome a determined minority. Uh, and so whether uh, Romney would, would, would try to make the kind of all-out uh, assault uh, that, that he uh, rhetorically seems to be entertaining, uh, I'm with you. I don't think he, uh, he would be nearly as uh, ferocious in, in the real world as he is in the campaign world. I don't think uh, that the big business supporters of the Republican Party uh, want to do that kind of, of slaughter, or at least they're, they're, not, uh, uh, they're not united on that. Uh, but the fact is that if we didn't have uh, this, uh, this rightist, this center-right president, who's constantly trying to hug uh, the left limits of republicanism, uh, then Democrats, not just uh, the uh, what we usually call the progressive wing, uh, but just mainstream Democrats, uh, could stop the Republicans in their tracks in terms of their most draconian threats. And what do you make on the issue of foreign policy? Uh, we've heard recently reported, Gareth Porter's reported uh, on the Real News Network, and we've seen other places, that, that the Obama administration seems to have sent signals to Israel that they would not go along with a, you know, a support a unilateral attack on Iran. Uh, and, and there has been uh, some pushback on this question right from the very beginning, even when Obama campaigned. Uh, he, he made it clear that, that, uh, the, that Iran is a regional power, he said in the primaries, that you have to accept that now. And if you want to cause bl give blame for allowing that, because he thinks it's not a good thing, uh, you can blame the Bush administration for the Iraq war. I mean, it, it, there's been a certain level of rationality uh, on, on this level. When I say rationality compared to an actual an attack, there's nothing rational about the sanctions, which are economic warfare against Iran. 
there's nothing uh, you know, logical other than the logic of power. The way the Obama administration buys into all this rhetoric that Iran has a nuclear weapons program when there's no evidence they do. I mean, given all of that, do you not think there's some difference between that and what a Romney might be? You know, backed by a Sheldon Adelson, backed by, you know, close, you know, foreign policy more or less controlled by neocons closely allied with Netanyahu. Well, you know, we, we pretty much accept it as fact uh, that the Bush regime uh, was on a roll, had the, uh, the, the giant U.S. ship of state uh, pointed at an attack uh, on Iran uh, back in the day. Uh, we know uh, that the intelligence agencies, all 16 of them, uh, took the wind out of the sails uh, of that uh, planned uh, offensive uh, by essentially saying that, that, that Iran was not an imminent uh, nuclear threat. Uh, we also know that significant segments of the military uh, are not in favor of an attack on Iran. They were not then and, 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 and are not now. So there are institutional uh, breaks in place, uh, just as there were during the Bush uh, government. Uh, but the, the Obama uh, administration uh, is very keen uh, to paint a picture of it, uh, of Obama having the hands on the leash that is holding back the snarling uh, Israeli uh, dog. Uh, he likes to p uh, position himself and posture uh, that way as the you know, voice of, of reason. Uh, I, d I don't see that necessarily as credible because I do recognize uh, that's the way he wants to be seen, just as uh, he tried to position the United States uh, as leading from behind in the assault on Libya. Uh, well, there could have been no air assault by the Europeans uh, on Libya uh, without the absolutely indispensable logistical tanker refueling support provided by the United States. So clearly the United States was uh, at the center of that air assault, not leading from behind, but Obama wanted to make it so. Uh, and he also had his secretary of, of war, of defense, uh, uh, seeming to be uh, very cautious about the assault on Libya. But it, it eventually did happen. Uh, I tend to think that th this is a game they're playing. Uh, and we read uh, that although the Obama administration uh, uh, is pretending to hold Israel back, it has recently transferred that same uh, air tanker refueling uh, capability without which uh, Israel could not mount a serious assault on Iran uh, to the Israelis. So what's up with that? So what, what are you advising your readers to do? To do about what? The problems facing the country in relationship to the election. Uh, you know, if, if you're, 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 I mean, it's not like you're wanting people I know you well enough to know. It's not like you want the Republicans to win. You're, you're trying to stake out an independent position from both those parties. So what is it you, you would like well, to do? Well, Paul, I, I think uh, that I sense that you and I are uh, uh, of similar mind. I am not afraid of Romney. I am not more afraid of Romney than I am of Barack Obama. I, 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 I am. Okay, so, then you so are. I, I am, I, but you go ahead. I just read you. <laughs> Uh, uh, I understand the intentions of Republicans, or at least the rhetorical uh, corners that they back themselves uh, into, uh, whether they'd act like that as, as governing parties uh, or not. Uh, however, I know that large segments of the Democratic base would, be, uh, would, would resist uh, these Republican foreign policy assaults and domestic assaults. I know from our uh, almost four-year experience uh, with Barack Obama uh, that they will not resist uh, his domestic assaults, uh, for example, uh, preventive detention, uh, and they won't resist his wars because uh, much of the base uh, only disapproves of and demonstrates against Republican wars. So there are certain things that are known about the behavior of the Democratic base uh, that makes one uh, makes me uh, sometimes more afraid of Obama simply because he'll get away with more. I, I take I take your point, but. 
I don't think an Al Gore presidency would have invaded Iraq. I don't see any evidence of it. And, and, and there was lots of opposition in the professional foreign policy circles, in the military. Uh, institutionally, there was a lot of opposition to the Iraq war. But, oh, the, was, but, but the Iraq war took place anyway, and, and I, I don't see why one, that couldn't be repeated again. Not to say that Obama might not start something, too. I, I don't have illusions about Obama. But, but I, I, it seems that that group that, that conducted the Iraq war is going to reassemble around Romney. Oh, Obama has done a, a, a great many uh, astoundingly aggressive things. Yeah, I don't disagree with that. At one point, he's, he, he is simultaneously uh, bomb droning five countries, uh, Libya, Somalia, Yemen, Afghanistan, uh, and, and of course, Pakistan. Uh, he has expanded the theaters of war in ways that would make many of Bush's uh, neocons salivate. Uh, I don't put anything past uh, Obama. Uh, 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 the invasion of Iraq, uh, I think, and I believe we may have had a previous conversation about this. Uh, I believe uh, that the uh, the ruling circles that that influenced the Bush administration, uh, these these neocons, uh, rolled the dice on this because they felt that in not too uh, not too far in the future, uh, the United States. Uh, would be uh, would find itself in terminal decline because of the inroads that were being made uh, by uh, China uh, and and Russia and wanted to uh, preclude uh, these kinds of developments by seizing uh, the oil not just of of Iraq uh, but of all of Central Asia. Well, that was a fiasco, uh, and in the wake of that fiasco and the loss of face of the United States, uh, I think the Obama presidency was born in terms of the ruling circle saying, uh, we need a new face, uh, we need a new image. Oh yeah, I, I don't disagree with any of that, but uh, my point is I think that the kind of corporate Democrats that are around Obama are not that different than those that would have been around Gore, and I don't think I don't see any evidence that they would have headed off into a war in Iraq. And there's some indication even now with Syria. I mean, the, sto the story's not over. But there's voices within the Republican Party, Lindsey Graham and others, who have been pushing hard for American military direct intervention into Syria. Uh, one could imagine those voices, uh, you know, might succeed within a Romney presidency. I, right, at least so far, you don't see that in the Obama administration. Well, let's I, see I, how I don't discount that it might. On, we certainly saw him act in Libya, so I don't take away the fact that he can do these sorts of things. Again, let's see how frustrated they get uh, if they don't get what they want by uh, this the, the, these proxy uh, uh, actions. Uh, then they come to their moment of truth. All right, well, we'll continue this discussion. Thanks very much for joining us, Glenn. Thank you. And thank you for joining us on The Real News Network.